My wife has my phone. Read an angry note I wrote but didn't send you. That is her calling from my phone. She says she wants to talk to you. Your wife just left me a voicemail. Am I supposed to respond? She thinks we're having an affair. Should I call and correct her understanding? Leave this to you to address? I don't know. I said we were close friends and nothing more. She knows I sent you flowers. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Sitting here, reading affidavits. Happy to be engaged in work again. I'm so happy for you. Meeting with Andy McCabe. Hilariously, Andy's suggestion was that I should be tied to the thing you're working on. <laughs> totally his idea. Holy shit, yes! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Did you get laid yesterday? I didn't, and I'm concerned that someone forgot to validate my time or something. <laughs> That's funny, he paid, not laid. Oh, and suddenly I'm in a very sour mood. Don't you brush me off. I'm wildly good at being persistent pain in the ass, too. Winky face. Maybe I should ask to be reassigned. Winky face. Ah, you better not, three exclamation points. <laughs> I have a real problem with Anglophiles and the whole perception of bringing intellectual greatness to the world. It was damn cold out this morning. Oh, I totally need your shirt and thin gloves, something for my ears. Hey, I assume going forward that it's okay to send entirely innocuous news articles, right? I just sent one. I hope Paul Ryan fails and crashes in a blaze of glory. Yes, and me too. At some point, the Republican Party needs to pull their head out of their ass. Shows no sign of occurring anytime soon. Check out the balls on France. Just like that, they're conducting airstrikes on Syria. Yeah, but France. <laughs> they're probably distributing leaflets with insults. I cannot think of a more qualified person. You are going to be awesome. Thank you. I'm suddenly really excited. Scared, but very happy. No, don't be scared. I, I get it. But you're so ready. You've already done the job and worked with McCabe. It's not the job I'm scared about, but I'm really scared about balance. OMG, sent an email to John Moffa I meant to send to you. Not bad, except for the odd emoticon. <laughs> Just blame fat fingers. <laughs> Had a dark moment of not being able to go to sleep last night and thinking, I wouldn't get the job and having to save my pride by stepping down if that happened. I didn't feel that way at 10.50 last night. No. That would be a grave injustice and it would seriously suck. But you'd get through it. People would know it was utter BS. Life would go on and you'd be stronger for it. <laughs> I am very good at reveling in insecurity. This is painful. Annual ethics training. Apparently they have way, way too much time on their hands. Funny, Kasich has long been suspected of being gay. Lived with his campaign manager for a long time. Till 
10 plus years ago when he married a supermodel wife and immediately popped out kids. Marchers making traffic problems. Oh yeah, some extremely offensive video screens set up in front of district. Thank God Comey can't read and he wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I truly hate these people. No support for the woman who actually has to spend the rest of her life rearing this child. But we care about life. This is assholes. Hi. I like my new job. Wide, wide awake. 13,742 things to worry about in my new job. Nothing like self-doubt in the dead of night. You were born to do this job. I have zero doubt. You're going to be amazing. Damn, these 12-hour days are rough. Yeah, well, it's good preparation for when you're deputy director. Only if you'll be the general counsel. Or deputy general counsel, that would work too. <laughs> have a great story for you. Not for here. No prude, but I'm really appalled by this. Trump called him the P word. The man has no dignity or class. He simply cannot be president. I, I keep hoping the charade will end and people will just dump him. The Republican Party is in utter shambles. When was the last competitive ticket they offered? How the f can Trump be a Republican? I have absolutely no idea. Still, he is so very interesting. <laughs> God, Trump is a loathsome human. Yet he still may win the nomination. Good for Hillary. It is. Would he be a worse president than Cruz? Trump, yeah. <laughs> I think so. I'm not so sure. <laughs> America will get what the voting public deserves. <sighs> That's what I'm afraid of. God, Hillary should win 100 million to zero. Hey, do you know if you're close? Walking to my office now. You didn't have to run. You said come soon. I am responsive. Holy shit. Cruz just dropped out of the race. It's going to be a Clinton-Trump race. Unbelievable. What? You heard right, my friend. Now the pressure really starts to finish Clinton emails. Hillary Clinton may be our next president. The last thing you need is going in there loaded for bear. You think she's going to remember or care that it was more DOJ than FBI? You going straight to Department of Justice? Yep. In office of Deputy Attorney General's car now. Wow. Double fancy fancy, winky face. Turn on NBC. What was it? <sighs> Guccifer, sleazy Romanian. Ugh. They all are. And those Romanians aren't even gypsies. Seriously, I kind of hate them. But they have the crookedness of the Russians with the entitledness of the Italians. Yuck. Your mission, Agent Page, should you choose to accept it. Dun, 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 dun. Totally off topic, but I'm kind of bummed. Randy offered to take Andy McCabe to the offsite using a Blackhawk on Monday. I've never been in a Black Hawk or any helicopter at all. Well, I really hope you can go. There's got to be enough room. Looks like I'm coming to work tomorrow. That really sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry, that isn't fair to you. I'm angry and I'm venting to you as a friend. Oh, Jesus, I have something to tell you. You know how to get my attention. Yeah, well, this will. Tease. Winky face. <laughs> F. Glenn Beck. Agreed. I really like David Brooks. Radio says Trump Hotel opens today. It doesn't look ready. That's one place I hope I never stay in. I agree. Hope it fails miserably. It won't, but... <laughs> I want to thank you for today. My self-interest aside, Thanks for your advocacy and everything you do every day. Great. 
10,000 emails came in requiring us to respond to proposed gun legislation tonight. How we make law in this country is offensive and irresponsible. I know it is. It's why I loathe Congress. At John Brennan, blue check. Questions Congress should ask the American translator in Helsinki. Were written notes passed between Mr. Trump and Mr. Putin? Did Mr. Trump ask Mr. Putin to conceal anything about the past? Were promises made? Were you asked to step aside at any time? Tweet. 22,000. At Comey, blue check. Thought experiment. Make a list of all the public figures in this country and around the world the current president has criticized. Ask yourself, why is Putin not on the list? No responsible American should ever stop asking, why? 106.6 thousand likes. Good morning. This is a transcribed interview of Peter Strzok, the former Deputy Assistant Director of the FBI's Counterintelligence Division. Chairman Goodlatte and Chairman Gowdy requested this interview as part of a joint investigation by the House Judiciary Committee and the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform to conduct oversight into the Department of Justice's investigation of former Secretary Clinton's handling of classified information and related matters. Could the witness please state his name and position at the FBI for the record? Peter Strzok, Deputy Assistant Director, Human Resources Division. Good morning, Mr. Strzok. Okay, and you are a special agent with the Federal Bureau of Investigation? Yes. And a Deputy Assistant Director in the FBI is a fairly high rank, as I understand it. I would call it a mid-level senior executive. Okay. <laughs> Before you were promoted to Deputy Assistant Director, you yourself were a section chief. What section did you supervise? The espionage section. Okay. Well, very generally and very succinctly, what does a counterintelligence agent do? So there's a blend of both intelligence type work and investigations that go on, as well as criminal work. The way the Bureau looks at counterintelligence is to protect America against any number of foreign actors, the government of China, the government of Russia, anybody who has a foreign intelligence service working against us. I have heard that you are regarded as the number one counterintelligence agent in the world. Comment on that. That's kind for whoever said that. I believe there are a number of very competent, qualified FBI agents who have spent their careers working counterintelligence, love the work, love protecting America, and I would count myself in that group. Within the last week or two weeks, there was media reporting that you were escorted out of the FBI building and that your security clearances were suspended. Is that correct? Yes. And I would add, they are reinstated as of this last weekend. For the purpose of allowing me to review material in the FBI's possession and appear here today. Jim Comey gave me another big arm around the shoulder hug after meeting Loretta Lynch on Wednesday. Well, he's proud of you. I think it's really cute. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Duck Dynasty, now Scott Bayo? Ridiculous. What? That's who's speaking at the Republican convention? Charles in charge? <gasps> That's the best they could do? Laughing my fing ass off. <laughs> it's Pathetic! Oh, that's unbelievable. My God, thank God it's not on. Oh, it's on, PBS, Republican snark. No, I will not be sucked in. The douchebags are about to come out. And oh, Bob Dole, this is pathetic. Donald Trump is an enormous douche. How was Trump when you met him other than a douche? Trump barely even spoke. But the first thing out of his mouth was, we're gonna win so big. <laughs> the whole thing is like living in a bad dream. God, it's just a two-bit organization. 
I do hope his disorganization comes to bite him hard in November. It has to, right? Hopefully you get home in time for crazy-ass grain storage pyramid Ben Carson tonight. <laughs> Look at the top six. I think the downfall of Rome was like this. Ooh, Mitch McConnell? I mean, he always reminds me of a turtle. My God, the crowd looks so bored. And Paul Ryan's a jerk. Trump is a disaster. I have no idea how destabilizing his presidency would be. Trump's not ever going to be president, right? Right? No. No, he's not. We'll stop it. At John Brennan, blue check. Your unfitness for office has never been more stark. Your lack of humanity never more apparent. Your politics never more craven. And your ultimate political ignominy never more certain. Tweet. At Comey, blue check. Example, whether it be good or bad, the higher the rank the officer is who sets it, the more striking it is. George. Washington. Tweet, 49.7 thousand combined likes. About to read Clinton email letter while I listen to Cory Booker. He's doing very well. Your boy Bernie better not F this up. <laughs> Winky smiley face. Jesus Christ, how can he talk that long? Question mark, exclamation point, question mark, exclamation point. Question mark, question mark, exclamation point. Congrats on a woman being nominated for president in a major party. About damn time. That's cute, thanks. Chills. Just because I'm a homer for American democracy that way. Yeah, it's pretty cool. She just has to win now. Not going to lie. I got a flash of nervousness yesterday about Trump. I want to believe the path you threw out for consideration in Nanny's office, that there's no way he gets elected. But I'm afraid we can't take that risk. It's like an insurance policy in the unlikely event you die before you're 40. Good afternoon. This is a transcribed interview of Lisa Page, a former assistant general counsel at the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Would the witness please state her name and the last position she held at the FBI for the record? Lisa Page. The last informal role I held was as special counsel to Andrew McCabe, the deputy director of the FBI. All right. I want to go to August 15, 2016. Quote, I want to believe the path you threw out in Andy's office. Dash, that there's no way he gets elected. Dash. But I'm afraid we can't take that risk. It's like an insurance policy in the unlikely event you die before you're 40, end quote. And that was Agent Struck to you. That's correct. And Andy would be whom? Andy McCabe. How long did this conversation last? I have no idea. What do you make of the dash? Quote, I want to believe the path you threw out in Andy's office, dash, that there is no way he gets elected, unquote. What, what is that clause that there is no way he gets elected? Modify. There was nothing on the calendar that there was a formal meeting, but I know the sort of sentiment that the text is meant to reflect, if I could explain that. Sure, sure. I just want you to keep in mind we're 15 days into a then nascent counterintelligence investigation. Yes, yes, I understand that. If that helps put it into context. So we were trying to find an answer to the question, right? So if Trump is not elected, then to the extent that the Russians were colluding with members of the team, we're still going to investigate that. But if he becomes president, that totally changes the game. Well, can you explain how you understood Mr. Strzok's analogy to an insurance policy? There is no actual insurance policy. He's making an analogy. I don't expect to die anytime soon. I hope that I don't, but I have life insurance. Unlikely, I'm 38, but you get it in the unlikely event that you die young. Can you explain what you meant by that text? That is an analogy to somebody saying, hey look, every pollster and talking head thinks that Secretary Clinton 
is going to be elected. And my responding, well, that may be true, but nevertheless, we need to responsibly investigate this in the unlikely event, based on the polls and the pundits and the experts, that candidate Trump is elected. And I am looking at a text that you sent to special agent Strzok, quote, Trump's not ever gonna become president, right? Right? Unquote. And then Strzok, the agent who originated the counterintelligence investigation, he responds, quote, no, no he's not, we'll stop it, unquote. Right, well, that's a different sort of context, which I'm happy to explain. Uh, so the reason he's both the originator and, like, the approver is because it was a Sunday and there's nobody around. Uh, yeah, July the 31st is a Sunday. You are correct. All right. And your response was, quote, no, period, no, he's not, period, we'll stop it, end quote. What did you mean by No. No was my, my recollection of no. And let me just say that there's been a lot written about this text. And what I can tell you, Congressman, is in no way does that suggest that I did or even considered taking any action. I'll tell you what, Agent Strzok, before you get to what you didn't mean by no, how about we settle on what you did mean by it? And then we can discuss the entire universe of what you didn't mean by it. I thought that question was her personal question as to whether or not he would become president. My answer, no, was my personal belief that I did not think he would be. Well then, why didn't you say, no, I don't think he's going to. No, I don't think he'll win the Electoral College. No, I don't think he'll do well in Ohio. Why did you say, no, he's not? Sir, because my recollection of that text which I don't recall specifically writing, is it's late at night. Are you denying writing it? Oh, I'm not denying writing it at okay. all. Okay, quote, no, no, he's not, unquote. He's not what? Going to be my belief that he is not going to be president. Okay. Quote, we'll stop it, unquote. Who's we? My response to that was coming off of a speech where then candidate Trump was insulting the family, the immigrant family of a fallen war hero. It was so unbelievable to me that the American people, that I, that anybody, given those sorts of sentiments and statements, would elect him to the presidency. That was my personal belief. Okay, okay, well that helps, Agent Strzok. By we, you meant the United States. Is that what you meant? Honestly, I don't know that I had Who any wrote specific- it? Who wrote it? The we. I wrote it, Congressman. All right. So, we are less than 10 days into an investigation, and you are talking about stopping the presidency of the person that you were supposed to be dispassionately and objectively investigating? No, sir. That is not what I've said. What I've said is my personal belief that the American people I did not believe would elect the president. That is fundamentally different from what you just said and suggested. We'll let the reader decide how fundamentally different it is. <laughs> Agent Struck. You left the Mueller investigation team at some point in time. Give me the circumstances about why. Sure, uh, I participated in the first briefing for Bob Mueller. He went to Andy McCabe and said, who was that woman? I want her on the team. And I said, I don't want to. And Andy said, well, you don't say no to Bob Mueller. I was very hesitant because I wanted a life back. I wanted to parent and be home. Oh. Regarding joining the Mueller team, you and I know the odds are nothing. If I thought it was likely I would be there, no question. I hesitate in part because of my gut sense and concern. There's no big there there. Jesus, you should read this. And Trump should go F himself. Oh God, that's a great article. Thanks for sharing, and F Trump. Maybe you're meant to stay where you are because you're meant to protect the country from that menace. Thanks. Of course, I'll try to approach it that way. <laughs> I can protect our country at many levels. <laughs> Was told my promotion board went the way Bill Priestap wanted, but still needs Comey's blessing. 
Yay. Come down to my office for lunch. I'm gonna blow your mind. At John Brennan Blue Check. At real Donald Trump's lies, reckless egoism, and incompetence disgrace the office of the presidency. There shall be no place in American society, much less our government, for the depravity being demonstrated daily by at real Donald Trump. Members of his cabinet who enable such behavior are betraying their oath of office by supporting an increasingly desperate despot. Tweet at Comey Blue Check. Oaths are sticky things. Tweet. Only 9.7 thousand likes. I want to switch over to March of 2016. It's a text from you to Special Agent Peter Strzok. Okay. Quote, God, Trump is a loathsome human. Unquote. I see that. What did you mean by that? I, I don't recall. What does the word loathsome mean? I have absolutely no idea what particular thing was uttered that I was responding to. But, and this is also the one in which I'll say that, you know, genitalia size was discussed. <laughs> Uh, 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 okay, uh, let's flip to May of 2017. This is actually a text from Special Agent Struck to you. Quote, and we need to open the case we have been waiting on while Andy McCabe is acting. And this is what, a uh, day after Director Comey has been fired? Uh, that's correct. So what is the case that you could not open when Jim Comey was the director, but you might be able to since Andy McCabe is acting? You're misreading that text, sir. Uh, I've been instructed by FBI counsel that what I can say is the decision to open the case was not about who was occupying the director's position. Which you would have to have a lot of creativity to be able to read that text and reach that conclusion. President Obama wants to know everything we're doing. Michael Flynn investigation still open, whoopsie face. But serendipitously good, I guess. Phew. But yeah, that's amazing. It's still open. Good, I guess. Bill Priestap sensed with it, and he wanted to know why we had to go aggressively doing these things openly. I worry Bill isn't getting the underlying distinction that I think is clear, but maybe I'm wrong. Sad face, sad face, sad face, sad face. Bill Priestap just told me that he brought up again, this time in front of Comey. Didn't know he was gonna do that. Yeah, Andy is frustrated. Going into meeting, don't repeat. I won't, I won't. Priestap said Comey started going one way and Andy cut him off. I'd be frustrated too. I have a question for you. Could the admonition regarding 1001 warning of false statements to the FBI be given at the beginning of the interview with Mike Flynn, or does it have to come following a statement which agents believe to be false? Does the policy speak to that? I feel bad I don't know this, but I don't remember ever having to do this. Plus, I've only charged it once in the context of lying to a federal probation officer. It seems to be, if the former, then it would be an easy way to just casually slip that in. Of course, you know, sir, federal law makes it a crime to dot, dot, dot. I haven't read the policy lately, but if I recall correctly, you can say it at any time. I'm 90% sure about that. Notes from what Comey told me about the Oval Office meeting January 5th, 2017. Joe Biden said Logan Act. President Obama said, make sure you look at things, have the right people on it. Director Comey said, Flynn to Kislyak calls, but appear legitimate. Happy New Year. You're yeah, right. Bill Priestap wrote this. I agreed yesterday that we shouldn't show Flynn 
if he didn't admit? What is our goal? Truth slash admission or get him to lie so we can prosecute him or get him fired? We regularly show subjects evidence with the goal of getting them to admit their wrongdoing. If we get him to admit to breaking the Logan Act, give facts to DOJ and have them decide. Is Andy McCabe good with F302 summary of Mike Flynn's FBI interview? I can feel him, my heart beating harder. I'm so stressed out about all the ways this has the potential to fully go off the rails. I made your edits and I sent them to Joe. I also emailed you an updated 302 summary of Mike Flynn's FBI interview. I really appreciate your time and edits. This document pisses me off. You didn't even attempt to make it cogent and readable. This is lazy work on your part. Lisa, you didn't see it before my edits that went into it, what I, what I sent you. I was trying, one, to completely rewrite the thing to save <laughs> voice, and two, get it out to you for general review and comment in anticipation of needing it soon. I greatly appreciate your time in reviewing and your edits, I incorporated them. Thank you. Priestap, like us, is concerned with oversharing, doesn't want Clapper giving Mike Flynn cuts to White House. All political, just shows our hand and potentially makes enemies. I really should take off the whole damn day. So go ahead. I'd obviously love to have you at the director's brief, but if not, I'll stop by and I'll give you an in-person debrief. <laughs> Talk about an unexpected and unpleasant blast from the past. Just went to a Southern Virginia Walmart. I could smell the Trump support. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's scary real down here. Vomit. Vomit, 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 vomit. Funny quote from my cousin-in-law. No way Trump will drop out. Hey, Republicans. How does it feel to carry something to term? On November the 3rd, you did text, quote, Jill Stein and Gary Johnson are effing everything up too, unquote. Does effing stand for f***ing? Yes. What did you mean by that? Well, my sense was, again, from a personal perspective, looking at the race, the presidential race, that a variety of actors were causing debates and shifts and movement in a way that was causing core messaging or just general sentiment to be moved and shifted. Well, whose chances did you think Stein and Johnson were hurting? Clinton's or Trump's? I believe Clinton's. Well, I could almost take from the reading of this text that you wanted her to win. Congressman, like many agents, I have had certainly strongly held political opinions that are personal. There have been presidents that I've liked that have been elected, and there have been presidents that I didn't particularly care for that were elected. So, it's fair to say you were a Hillary Clinton supporter. Congressman, I think that's clear from the reading of the text that certainly I wasn't a Trump fan. Well, just to be on the safe side, we'll get you to say it anyway, even if it is clear from the reading of the text. You were a Clinton supporter? Sir, my personal perspective was that I supported Secretary Clinton ahead of then-candidate Trump. And when did you decide to start supporting her? Did you support her in the primary? No, I, again, this makes me uncomfortable that the legislative branch is inquiring about the personal views of an executive- Well, your texts make us pretty damn uncomfortable too. <laughs> Agent struck. Well, four days later, I think, referencing an article entitled Victory by Mr. Trump remains possible, you said, ah, quote, OMG, this is terrifying, unquote. What does OMG stand for? Oh my God. Oh my God, this is fucking terrifying. What was terrifying about a victory by Trump? Well, what did you mean by fucking terrifying? The prospect that candidate Trump might be elected? And just so I'm right in my mind, this is while you were also dispassionately, objectively investigating whether or not he colluded slash coordinated with a foreign actor to interfere with the election. No, 
Those are independent things, Congressman. Were those going on at the same time? Yes. So, in November, when you said it would be f***ing terrifying for him to become the president, you were investigating whether or not he had colluded slash coordinated slash otherwise conspired with a foreign actor to interfere with the election. Yes. On March the 14th, Lisa Page texted you, quote, finally two pages away from finishing all the president's men. Did you know the president resigns in the end, unquote? And you replied, quote, what? God, that we should be so lucky, unquote. In March of 2017, were you still working on the Russia investigation? Yes. What would the cause of the president's resignation be? This is merely a personal snarky expression of my personal belief and nothing more. You think the head of the executive branch resigning is just a snarky thing to say? I think my personal opinion was that I had no love lost for Mr. Trump. Were you investigating what Russia did and with whom, if anyone, they did it in March of 2017? Yes. But yet you're somehow able to separate your professional views from your private views. Yes, absolutely. What every agent working every case does every day. Well, let's get to that. You texted, quote, me and this case, unquote. What case would you be referring to, Mr. Strzok? Uh, what is the date on that? May the 18th. Uh-huh. Anything important happened around May the 17th or 18th that you can recall? Yeah, so at that time, it was right around the time that Special Counsel Mueller was appointed, I believe. Now, when you say right around the time, how about mm, the day after? Okay. So the day after Special Counsel Mueller was appointed, you're still working on the existing Russia investigation at this point. I am. Uh-huh. On May the 18th, 2017, you texted, quote, for me and this case, unquote. What case were you referring to? At that time, the Russia collusion investigations. Quote, I personally have a sense of unfinished business. I unleashed it with the Clinton email investigation. Now I need to fix it and finish it, unquote. What is the quote, unquote, it? Congressman, I, I don't... We did this earlier, and I don't want to get into parsing individual words. Well, actually, I do, Agent Strzok. <laughs> That's why I asked you, what does it mean? You wrote it. What does it mean? The text, I'm telling you, Congressman, is my sense that we had done the Clinton investigation, and my involvement in that case, watching that case go from start to finish watching that information be weaponized by the government of Russia and used in the context of our election. My feeling was, I've been in this from the beginning. We came to a conclusion. Well, what I find so fascinating about that answer, Special Agent Strzok, is what you also texted on May the 18th, which is, <laughs> quote, you and I both know the odds are nothing. If I thought it was likely, I'd be there, no question. I hesitate in part because of my gut sense and concern, there's no big there, there, unquote. What's not there? The context of that quote is, I was not certain at the time, one, if there was any sort of illegal activity going on, the nature of that. We had yet to determine, you know, was it going on? Was it coordinated? Was this a bunch of individual opportunists? And I find that interesting, because on exactly the same day, you texted those other things. You said, quote, who gives a fuck? One more assistant director versus an investigation leading to impeachment, unquote. Sounds to me like you'd already made up your mind. Impeachment of whom? That's not true. Impeachment of whom? That would have been impeachment of Trump, but the text clearly does not say will. My sense was it might. That's undefined in the text and I had not prejudged or concluded that at all. There you are, four days into Special Counsel Mueller's probe, talking impeachment again, Special Agent Strzok. The day was announced, you referenced impeachment. Four days later, you referenced impeachment. It sounds, I guess, to someone who might be a little bit cynical that you had already made up your mind how you wanted it to end. Is that true? I had absolutely not. 
at John Brennan Blue Check. We are now in a full-blown national security crisis. By trying to prevent the flow of information to Congress, Trump is abetting a Russian covert operation to keep him in office for Moscow's sake, not America's. Tweets! At Comey Blue Check. So many questions. So many answers. Tweet. Geological time offers useful perspective. Tweet. 55.9 thousand likes, 23.2 thousand likes, and 14 thousand likes, respectively. <laughs> Did you read this? Michelle Obama is an incredibly impressive woman. The Obamas in general, really. While he has certainly made mistakes, I'm proud to have had him as my president. Reading the most depressing lead story about Trump in the New York Times couldn't be more proud and sadder of First Lady's comments. You gonna watch the debates? I honestly don't want to. It's not worth the stress to me. I cannot believe what I am hearing. I'm riled up. Trump is a fucking idiot, is unable to provide a coherent answer. I can't pull away. What the f happened to our country, Lise? Question mark, exclamation point, question mark, question mark, exclamation point, question mark. Exclamation point. I don't know, but we'll get it back. We're America, we rock. <laughs> Donald just said bad hombres. Bad hombres? That's some jive turkey talk, honky. Chris Wallace is a turd. Hot damn, Hillary is throwing down, saying Trump in bed with Russia. Sigh, I'm sorry, she could do so much better, but she's just not getting traction. I'm so damn mad, Lisa, and disgusted and disappointed. Trump just said what the FBI did is disgraceful. Watching the post-debate commentary, it's vaguely satisfying to see Megyn Kelly, who had Botox and looks horrible, utterly going after Trump. Deputy Director, 100% supportive regarding your idea. Was grateful for the suggestion. I'm sorry I couldn't give you credit. Oh. Wall Street Journal. Boy, that was fast. Should I find it and tell the team? No, I think not. I need to send. Jesus, Pete, then fine. Send it to everybody you know. You're not being fair about this. I really cannot believe you're taking this position, and it anchors me. I am being fair about this. All caps. What the F difference does it make to anybody on the team? All caps. It's on the internet, five exclamation points. All caps, which you only know about because I told you it was there. You told me it was there 30 minutes after it went up. Why are you so angry? Because it's critical of Andy McCabe? Just a tip. It's not the way to engender goodwill by doing a good deed and then rubbing a nose in it. Lisa, I'm not rubbing your nose in it. Why do I send noteworthy articles at all? Are you upset because you think this points to you? Because if I waited t 20 minutes, two hours, whatever, it would be okay? Yeah, and I told you a grand total of two minutes after I learned it was up from Andy. And you sent it five minutes after that. And if you actually read your text instead of desperately trying to be first, you would see that I said, no, I don't think you should send it. I shouldn't have to explain all of this. You knew it was there because of me. I don't know why any of this is so hard to understand. None of this is hard to understand, which is why I'm asking you why you're so damn angry at this. Literally every other significant article we've treated this way. 
The article was out for half an hour. My sending it in no way points to you. I believe you betrayed my trust. If I thought I was wrong or had made a mistake, I would just say so. Thanks. You know, I'm done talking about this. Could you stop already? An article to share. FBI agents knew of Clinton-related emails weeks before director was briefed. Okay, now I'm getting angry. Sorry. Utterly terrible day. I'm not sure I can identify one single redeeming thing about it. The Bureau does not deserve us. You can come hang out in 4012 with me. I have remnants of Qdoba chips and salsa. At John Brennan, blue check. When the full extent of your venality moral turpitude, and political corruption becomes known, you will take your rightful place as a disgraced demagogue in the dustbin of history. You may scapegoat Andy McCabe, but you will not destroy America. America will triumph over you. Tweet. At Comey Bluecheck. Special Agent Andrew McCabe stood tall over the past eight months, when small people were trying to tear down an institution we all depend on. He served with distinction for over two decades. I wish Andy well. I also wish continued strength for the rest of the FBI. America needs you. Tweet. 202.6 thousand likes. At John Brennan, Plutek, your cabal of unprincipled, unethical, dishonest, and sycophantic cronies is being methodically brought to justice. We all know where this trail leads. If your utter incompetence is not enough to run you out of office, then your increasingly obvious political corruption surely will tweet. All right. Let me move forward to May 18th of 2017, which is to put in context the day after Bob Mueller has been appointed special counsel. And Peter Strzok texted you and said, quote, for me in this case, I personally have a sense of unfinished business. I unleashed it with the Clinton investigation. Now I need to fix it and finish it, unquote. A person reading it might come to the conclusion the fix it means fix the outcome, change the outcome. Stop Donald Trump. Finish it. I think the sort of unfinished business to me really just reflects who Pete is, which he's a leader. He cares about Russia in particular. It has in many ways dominated his career and wanted to finish out the investigation, whatever the outcome. Yeah, based on that answer though, it does sound like he had a gut sense and concern that there's no big there, there. I'm sorry, what, uh, what was the question? <laughs> With respect to any collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. Right, and so he is the best investigator. So <laughs> if someone is going to find it, it's going to be him. <laughs> That's not out of animus. That's out of, I hate Russia. But at least at that point. He had a concern that there wasn't anything there. Did he want to find something? No, no, no. If it's going to end in impeachment, that's kind of a big deal. That's monumental. People who are in Watergate are still known as someone who is on Watergate. There are no wrong choices here. Like, he worries, he overthinks. At either level, he would be doing something he loves? The country is winning because he is protecting it from foreign threats. So right, we're both smart, hardworking people. But we both have a lot of self-doubt. And I want you to look at the text that Peter Strzok sent to you that says, quote, and damn, this feels momentous. The other one did too, but that was to ensure we didn't F something up. This matters because this matters in all caps, period. So super glad to be on this voyage with you, unquote. Do you see that? 
The Clinton investigation was whether she mishandled classified information. That's important. But it does not matter like a person associated with a presidential campaign receiving a potentially accepting an offer of assistance from Russia, which I view as our sort of most treacherous adversary. But when he says, quote, this matters because this matters, so super glad to be on this voyage with you, unquote, it doesn't sound like he's stressed. It sounds like he's happy. That's a personal comment, sir. I, I, I don't know what you mean. Explain that to me. That's a reflection that, okay, the Clinton email investigation is over. So he's going back to kind of his day job, right? I'm going back to my day job. And now we have a new job, investigation, which will necessarily involve regular contact with each other. The New York Times probability numbers are dropping every day. I am scared for our organization. Jill Stein and moron Gary Johnson are effing everything up too. Well, why don't we go 10 days forward and see if we can put a little clarity on this, whether or not you're talking about Trump or sources and methods. Quote, just went to a Southern Virginia Walmart, could smell the Trump support, unquote. What did it smell like? <laughs> Sir, that text is meant to convey my sense of how going from Northern Virginia down to Southern Virginia, how very different the population was in their support for the presidential candidates and the congressional candidates. Yeah, I get that, Agent Strzok. Unfortunately, doesn't come anywhere near what you actually typed. My question, to refresh your recollection, was what did it smell like? I mean, you didn't write anything about how Northern Virginia is different from Southern Virginia and how the politics may be different in the bluer parts of the state. That's not what you wrote. You wrote, quote, you can smell the Trump support, unquote. And my question to you is, what did it smell like? These are conversational, private texts. These are not statements for the record. These are not any sort of process by which I was conveying my intent and meaning. This is a conversation done electronic. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's talk about these texts generally as they apply to Ms. Page. You have described them as personal exchanges with a close confidant a number of times today, correct? Yes, sir. Now, I don't mean to embarrass you, but is Lisa Page someone that you do or at some point in time did love? I was engaged at one point in time in an extramarital affair. I deeply regret the pain that all these things have caused my family. I will always regret that. I regret those texts in the way that they have done that harm, and I would rather not continue to cause any pain to my family by, you know, going down this line of questioning. Okay, so what I am trying to establish through all of that is, was Lisa Page someone that you cared about deeply at the time that you were sending these messages? Lisa Page at that time was somebody I was engaged in an extramarital affair with. And you also knew that these text messages, they were always intended to be private. Yes. To a confidant, someone that you were having an affair with and that you cared about. Yes, sir. So explain to me how given that context, we shouldn't look at these text messages as your most honest and true expression of what you were thinking at the time that you wrote them. I continually guarded to ensure that none of my personal political beliefs ever influenced any act I took as an FBI agent. That isn't who I am and that is not who the FBI is. And so the, the use and the suggestion that that is there deeply undermines the institution of the FBI. But with all due respect, Agent Strzok, you're the one that's suggesting that. You just told us that these private text messages that you intended to only be seen by the person you were having an affair with were the truest and most honest expression of your thoughts. Congressman, that's what you said. That's not what the witness said. Well, let's ask him. Let's ask him. Let's ask him. Let's ask him. Are you more or less likely to be candid and honest if you don't think anybody else is going to read it? I would, I don't want to hypothesize. In general, private conversations, I think there's an expectation of an ability to speak candidly. See, that's not tough. 
You're more likely to be candid if you don't think anybody else is gonna read it, if you think it's private. That was my point. So, what did you mean by smell the Trump support? What I meant by that was that I was struck by the, just the number and amount of Trump support. But that's not what you said. You said you could smell the Trump support. Could you also smell the Clinton support? I haven't ever tried. <laughs> I am telling you in this case, in this instance, my use of that phrase was in the context of an analogy of how different the local population was. Well then, why not say I could see the Trump support? I'm not gonna go back and defend the conversational selection of a particular word at any given point. Well, you put SMELL in all caps. That took a little time, didn't it? Not appreciably more than all lowercase. Certain intentionality when you put something in all caps, again, isn't it? Again, Congressman, I feel like we're repeating the same question. I'm just waiting on the first answer. <laughs> what did it smell like? <laughs> Whew, I wanna watch this with you. Trump about to get off his plane. Going to go pour myself a glass of wine. OMG, this is f***ing terrifying. A victory by Mr. Trump remains possible. Mrs. Clinton's chance of losing is about the same as the probability that an NFL kicker misses a 38-yard field goal. Yeah, that's not good. Happy election geekdom here. Trump won North Carolina. CNN? Projecting Florida for Trump? Damn. Voters won't listen because they're stupid. And I'm moving to another country. Now a historic moment. Uh, we can now project the winner there of the presidential is. race. CNN projects Donald Trump wins the presidency. The business tycoon and TV personality capping his improbable political journey with an astounding upset victory. OMG, I am so depressed. Oh, honestly, I don't know if I can eat. I'm very nauseous. God, I'm really effing depressed. <sighs> Having a really tough time with the election this morning. I bought all the president's men. Figure I need to brush up on Watergate. Meanwhile, we have our task ahead of us. One thing that is going to suck about my new job, everybody's gonna know how late I get in. <laughs> I'll direct everyone to take the Tuesday daytime flight. Smiley face. Should I move my seat next to yours in maybe the most important case of our lives? For me, in this case, I personally have a sense of unfinished business. I unleashed it with Clinton emails, now I need to fix and finish it. With director Comey gone and Andy McCabe leaving, who says I get another promotion from the deputy assistant director? So look, you say we text on that phone when we talk about Hillary because it can't be traced. We should stop having this conversation here. God, we're a good team. I just think we're both ready for a change, truly. It's definitely true. Pete, let's talk about this tomorrow. Okay. Bye, Lisa. Hope some sleep brings clarity. If I don't go to the Mueller team, does that make your decision easier? Nope. America needs you, Lise. <laughs> I'm still really stressed out. I feel like an imposter. There's no way I can live up to their expectations. Please, you're gonna be great. I think, no. I'm more replaceable than you are on this. You are different and more unique. This is yours. But I'm not a real lawyer anymore. They have no idea. Driving to work and business wear because Mueller. 
Oh, Lord, you meeting them? I'm proud of you. In a million ways, I'm proud of you and admire you. Sleep well, Lisa. Smiley face. What am I doing? Just padding my resume? Doing something meaningful, historic. Oh, great. Rachel Maddow just listed by name each of the people the director listed as having discussed the matter with. I was the only one they hadn't identified yet, but they were still working on it. Oh, crap. Welcome to the club. How are you feeling about it? God help me. I don't know how much more of this that I can take. Washington Post picked up your name in an online blog citing Wired. And you're on Wikipedia. Oh, Jesus. And The Guardian has a reference to me which is now completely exaggerated and overblown. Ooh, smiley face. Link? Guardian suggests I'm a Russia-organized crime expert. It's ridiculous. You saw you're in the print New York Times, right? Please don't ever text me again. What? At Comey Blue Check, Mr. President, America will hear my story soon, and they will be able to judge who is honorable and who is not. Tweet. <laughs> Four hundred and twelve point one thousand likes. <laughs> At John Brennan, blue check. Jim Comey is far more decent, ethical, honest, competent, and patriotic than you could ever hope to be. Tweet. Phone records and intercepted calls show that members of Donald J. Trump's 2016 presidential campaign and other Trump associates had repeated contacts with senior Russian intelligence officials in the year before the election. Notes to FBI. We have not seen evidence of any individuals affiliated with the Trump team in contact with Russian intelligence officials. Officials said that one of the advisors picked up on the calls was Paul Manafort. We are unaware of any calls with any Russian government official in which Manafort was a party. <laughs> officials would not disclose which Russian intelligence officials were on the calls and how many of Mr. Trump's advisors were talking to the Russians. Again, we are unaware of, all caps, any Trump advisors engaging in conversations with Russian intelligence officials. <laughs> Senior FBI officials believe that the former British intelligence officer who compiled the dossier, Christopher Steele, has a credible track record. FBI agents had made contact with some of Mr. Steele's sources. Recent interviews and investigation, however, reveal Steele may not be in a position to judge the reliability of his subsource network. But the cases are part of the routine electronic surveillance of communications of foreign officials by American intelligence and law enforcement agencies. Our <laughs> coverage has not revealed contact between Russian officials and the Trump team. James Clapper, Obama's director of intelligence, step forward. You have to remember Putin's background. He's a KGB officer. It's what they do. They recruit assets. And that's what he's doing with our president. In my view, the evidence for Russian collusion was overwhelming. Raise your hand under oath. 
I never saw direct empirical evidence that the Trump campaign or someone in it was plotting or conspiring with the Russians to meddle in the elections. Andrew McCabe, Obama's deputy director of the FBI, now CNN contributor. There was a lot of information that we could not disprove in the Steele dossier. A fair amount of information we knew to be accurate. Under oath, tell me the most damaging thing that you know of in this Steele dossier that you have been able to verify is true. Sir, I can't answer that question off the top of my head. The thing that strengthens your ability to go before the FISA court and say, we want to open this investigation based on this piece of information. Sir, I can't give that kind of detail off the top of my head. Susan Rice, Obama's national security advisor. But President Trump's motivations are, I think, is a legitimate question. But the policies that this president has pursued globally have served Vladimir Putin's interests. Raise your hand under oath. But was there anything official that you saw in your capacity in the prior administration that showed actual coordination between the campaign to interfere with or influence the 2016 election? I don't recall intelligence that I would consider evidence of conspiracy. All right. Well, I'll skip the next question then. We've done conspire. We've done coordinate. How about we do collude? Same thing. Same answer? Yes. Loretta Lynch, Obama's attorney general, under oath, did you receive any information during your tenure as attorney general from anyone or anywhere that would show a level of conspiracy between the Russian government and its affiliates and the Trump campaign? I don't recall that being briefed up to me, so I can't say that it existed or not. Hmm. Save it for the book. At NatSec Lisa, blue check. I'm done being quiet. Tweet. There was no insurance policy Tweet. 2.7 thousand retweets? <sighs> Yesterday, our monstrous, despicable president assaulted Americans engaged in peaceful protest for a photo op. He could be reelected. I wrote a few mean texts four years ago and have been rained down with insults and attacks ever since. But I'm the fucking coup plotter. Got it. Tweet. Hi, Judicial Watch President Tom Fitton. I hope you enjoyed the Obamagate movie, which we were able to bring to you, thankfully, in partnership with the Unreported Story Society. But what an ugly story it was in many ways, despite the comedy we were able to bring to you here with James Comey, Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, John Brennan, all at the top levels of our nation's government and all abusing their power 
to target President Trump and other innocent Americans. It was the worst corruption scandal in American history. The characters you saw in the movie were really part of the supporting cast for one man, Barack Obama. He knew everything about the Obamagate targeting of President Trump. He was running it out of the Oval Office document show. In fact, it's now just been reported that he was briefed that the whole Obamagate scam was designed to protect Hillary Clinton from the consequences of her email behavior. So you had Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and yes, Joe Biden intimately involved in the illicit targeting of President Trump and other innocent Americans. And I know you're frustrated that they frankly even haven't been questioned yet about their role in this, the worst corruption scandal in American history. But you can be sure that through this movie, millions of additional Americans will know about what they and their appointees and hangers on were up to. And you can be sure that Judicial Watch will continue to do the heavy lifting to hold them accountable through the courts and through the court of public opinion as we educate more Americans and litigate for more documents about what this coup cabal was up to. The Obamagate movie is a marriage of art and reality. And frankly, I think you owe it to your fellow Americans to share the movie and encourage them to watch it and encourage their friends to watch it. Because we will never hold these corrupt individuals accountable if no one knows what they did. This movie documents for the ages the corruption of the Obama era, and hopefully the next movie will show how this gang was held accountable. Thank you.